So I wanted to take a bit of time to talk about the different methods for applying dye to leather. These are all good for different things, so they all have their strengths and weaknesses. I don't really have a favourite out of these, I tend to use all of them. So I should probably preface this video by saying that every single piece of leather is going to take dye slightly differently and each of these methods of applying dye will leave you with a slightly different effect. So a good idea is to test the dye and the leather out, test your process on scrap leather. That'll just give you a good idea of what to expect on the finished piece and maybe make any adjustments that you want to at that stage. Okay, so the first method is to use a wool dauber. That's literally just a piece of sheep's wool attached to a, a steel wire. These are pretty handy for dyeing smaller pieces and going around the edges and things like that. When you use a, wall, a wool dauber, particularly on the bigger pieces, you're left with kind of brush strokes almost. You can, you can clearly see where the dye's gone. So if you are going to use a wool dauber on a big piece, you'll probably need a few coats to cover that up. So pay attention to what dye you're using. Again, this is why you would want to test it beforehand because some dyes don't actually darken. However many coats you put on, they don't actually darken, but most will darken with each coat. So that's something you want to try out beforehand. Okay, and another method, which is a lot better for using on big pieces, is to use either a cloth or a sponge. You can just cover a lot more surface area with, with a cloth, it's a lot quicker and one coat of this will go further than one coat with the wool dauber, you know, you'll, you'll get it more even. When I say a cloth, what I use for this is actually just an old t-shirt, but you can use any sort of cloth you want and you want to try and get something that doesn't have too many fibres that are going to pull off. Uh, you can also use like dish sponges and things like that. You actually get sponges which are designed for this exact purpose which work really well too. Okay, and the last method is something called dip dyeing. So just exactly as it sounds, you just completely submerge the leather in the dye before taking it out. This method for sure gets you the most even coat if that's what you're into. And it also helps if you've got a lot of pieces to dye. You can get a production line going pretty quickly. But if you've got bigger pieces, you're going to need a lot of dye to fully get it submerged under. The way that I tend to do dip dyeing is if I'm using maybe some weaker dyes, I've got some homemade dyes that I use. They're not the strongest dyes, they don't take very well if you just apply them on the surface. So submerging them and letting them soak in that dye, that's a good way to, to let the leather take on the dye. And the longer you leave it, the darker it will get. That's just a lot easier than applying 10 coats or something of a weak dye. So whatever method you use, you're going to want to let the, the dye dry for maybe a few hours. You don't really need any more than that. Maybe if you're dip dyeing with certain dyes, it might take like five or six hours to completely dry. But you, you really don't need to wait any more than that. What I would suggest though is when the dye is dry, there's going to be some residue left over, some of the pigment that sits on top of the leather. You want to go over that with just a clean dry cloth and just buff the leather. It's going to give a little bit of a shine and it's also just going to take that, that pigment off, which means that that's not going to transfer onto your clothes or anything like that over time. Okay, so go out and try a hand dyeing leather. Let me know how you get on and if you need any help, just ask for it. Okay, bye.